Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to continue talking about spherical coordinates. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to use um, the parameterization for a sphere to describe various different surfaces in three-dimensional space. So the first thing I want to start with is um, really just to illustrate um, why s varies from 0 to pi when we uh, parameterize a sphere in three-dimensional space. So what I have here is from the previous video, the standard parameter parameterization for a sphere in 3D space, r cosine t sine s, r sine t sine s, r cosine s. And um, it's probably already pretty clear why for a uh, sphere of radius 3, you would need r equals 3, and why you would want t to go from 0 to 2 pi. So that, that probably makes sense, and you can kind of see it here, right? Like t needs to go from 0 to 2 pi to give full circular cross sections um, of our sphere. And then r equals 3, of course, it's a sphere of radius 3. The part that students get stuck on is why is s only varying from 0 to pi? And the answer to that, you can kind of see it in this animation. Look at how I have my zenith angle um, coming down from the positive branch of the z-axis to fill out the entire sphere. We only need to let that zenith angle go by pi radians to fill out the entire sphere. Now, what happens if you accidentally allow s to go from 0 to 2 pi? Well, what will happen is when you reach the negative branch of the z-axis, it'll start coming back up again, and you'll get you'll basically trace over the sphere twice, and you're going to get double your answer. So you don't want to accidentally let s go from 0 to 2 pi, because if you do, you're going to end up doubling your desired result. So I hope this animation kind of helps. I think it should help you kind of lock in your understanding of why s goes from 0 to pi. But I did make a little demo where you could try this for yourself in Mathematica. Instead of looking at an animated GIF that just kind of keeps looping, you could try dragging the slider yourself and try it out. All right, in this one, uh, we're going to do a similar thing as the previous example. We're going to fix r at 3 for a sphere of radius 3. Um, this time, we're going to let s go from 0 to, to pi. We're going to lock our sphere in to a full rotation down from the positive branch of the z-axis all the way down to the negative branch of the z-axis. And we're going to let a different parameter vary. This time, we're going to let t vary from 0 to 2 pi in this animation. And it just shows you the same exact sphere, but we're kind of building it out in a different way because we're letting um, we're letting t rotate on the x y plane from zero to two pi. And what I'd like you to see here is that we're starting from the positive branch of the x axis, and then we are progressing towards the positive branch of the y axis. That would be in the counterclockwise direction when you're thinking about the x y plane, and so. This t parameter, as it varies from two, 0 to 2 pi, should look very, very familiar from your previous courses, from the time that you took trigonometry to calc BC all the way to this course. This t parameter is the theta that you're used to from your previous courses. And then the other thing I should mention real briefly is you can try this yourself in Mathematica. I did make a little demo for you guys to try if you'd like to uh, give that a whirl yourself. You could try dragging the sliders instead of watching an animation that is just looping infinitely. All right, so here's where we should be. Um, at this point in the, in the video, I should be able to give you a piece of a sphere or sometimes a different, different object, and you should be able to describe that by locking in values or ranges for r, s, and t. So what I mean by that is, like on the literacy sheet for this chapter, we'll give you some pictures that look somewhat like this, and you have to supply reasonable ranges for r, s, and t that could produce that picture. So, for example, it looks to me like this came from a sphere of radius 3, because it looks like 3 is up here, so if you kind of rotate down, this looks like it's about three units from the origin. Kind of hard to see that label there. Let me write it here instead. So it looks like the distance at each point from the origin to this shape is three units. So r equals three seems like a reasonable value for r. 
Now we want to think about how much our zenith angle is rotating down from the positive branch of the z-axis. And it looks to me that it would be reasonable to say that we could start at s equals, say, pi over 6, rotating down about pi over 6 from the positive branch of the z-axis, all the way down to about s equals pi over 4. Seems like a reasonable range on our zenith angle. Hence, z goes from pi over 6 to pi over 4. And then because we, it looks like we have a full rotation on the xy plane from 0 to 2 pi, you guys can kind of see that happening here. You would need a full rotation from 0 to 2 pi on the xy plane to get this full piece of this surface. We're letting t go from 0 to 2 pi. Now, is this an exact science? No way. Um, so there's going to be a range of acceptable answers on your literacy sheet. So, for example, instead of r equals 3, if you said something like r equals 3.1, well, no one would be able to say definitively whether it's 3 or 3.1. So both of those answers would be acceptable. Um, you should probably use Occam's razor here and go with the simpler answer, though. So probably r equals 3 is the uh, better choice versus 3.1. And then, you know, uh, pi over 6 and pi over 4, I'm just picking common angles that seem reasonable. Also, I made the slides so I know exactly what these values are. But if you're looking at a picture that someone else made and you don't get to see the source code, um, would it be reasonable to, instead of saying pi over 6, say pi over 5 to pi over 4? Sure. That, um, these, there's an acceptable range of answers that would work. Now, would it be OK, instead of pi over 4, to say pi over 2? No, because pi over 2 would be sitting on the positive uh, on the uh, xy plane. And we could see that this thing is floating above the xy plane. So there are certainly values that would not be reasonable. But, you know, pi over 4.1 again, would that be reasonable? Sure. Um, there's no way to tell either way. Um, so just keep that in mind. There's a, um, there's a reasonable range of values for these parameters, and then there is certainly uh, the possibility of going beyond a reasonable range as well, in which case you would have to readjust. All right, so let's try another one here. Um, so this is a piece of a sphere um, that, again, we want to figure out our distance from the origin. That we can actually tell because it looks like we're intersecting the positive branch of the y-axis here. So it looks like r is going to equal 3. And then it looks like this thing is living completely below the xy plane. So we have r equals 3. Um, we are below the xy plane. But it also looks like we're intersecting the xy plane. So it looks to me like s is going to start at pi over 2 and go up to some value that is, you know, halfway between pi over 2 and pi, I would say probably something like 3 pi over 4. And then uh, in terms of our t rotation, t is not going from 0 to 2 pi this time. It looks like t is starting at about pi over 4 and going up to about pi over 2, halfway between the positive branch of the x and y, positive branch of the x and y axis, which would be pi over 4 is halfway between the positive branch of the x-axis and the positive branch of the y-axis, and then hitting the y-axis here, which to me would be pi over 2. So here we have it. This is a good possible answer here. Um, again, are there some of these values that, that could be tweaked a little bit? For sure. Um, in particular, I think this 3 pi over 4, um, that was a little bit of guesswork, or in my case, knowing the source code for these images. Um, but there are other reasonable answers here. But again, try to keep it simple. I think 3 pi over 4 is probably the simplest and best choice we have here to say it looks like we're going halfway down from the xy plane down to the positive negative branch of the z-axis. And finally, for this video, we're going to talk about how to make a cone out of spherical coordinates, which might sound surprising that we're able to do that. Um, but what we haven't tried doing yet is locking in one of our parameters that's not the radius. So you'll notice that on the previous two slides, the previous couple examples, we were fixing r at a value, and then we were letting s and t vary. Um, we can make a cone by trying something a little bit different, which is let's take our zenith angle and let's lock that in. Let's say that we are rotating down by pi over 6 radians. 
and that's going to be fixed. So we're going to let s equal pi over 6. No range there, no inequality there. s is locked in at a rotation down from the positive branch of the z-axis at an angle of pi over 6. And then um, in this case, r is going to vary. r is going to vary from a radius of 0 out to a radius of, well, we want a slant height of 4, so 4 here. So r is going to vary from 0 to 4. And then the easiest one for this particular picture is you could see that t is going to vary from 0 to 2 pi because we need a full rotation around here on the xy plane, a full rotation from 0 to 2 pi to get that full cone. So we could write our answer as r is equal to 4. Or sorry, not r equals 4. r varies from 0 to 4. Um, t varies from 0 to 2 pi. And then s is locked in at pi over 6. And that would put this answer in the same format that we saw on the previous slides. Um, the other thing you could do, though, is you could use Mathematica to plot this cone using our parameterization for a sphere, using our spherical coordinates here. So you could go ahead and um, plug in s equals pi over 6, and then plot this using parametric plot 3D, where you let r go from 0 to 4 and t from 0 to 2 pi, and then you're plugging in pi over 6 for, for your s values. And if you use parametric plot 3D, using these, uh, these parameters that are ranging, as you see on the screen, Mathematica will spit out exactly this cone, which is kind of cool. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in to this video. In my next video, I'm going to move on to talking about cylindrical coordinates and kind of the relationship between spherical and cylindrical coordinates.